Welcome back to my YouTube channel, everyone. This is Pastor Frank Demore. Today is November the 5th of 2018. And you're looking at one of two of my Bible prophecy sites. This is BibleProphecyMan.com. And both of my sites, both this and my End Times Research Ministry com site has my book that you can download today for free all you have to do is go to the front page of either of my sites scroll down you'll see the flaming title of the book the last chronicles of planet earth the documentary on bible prophecy and current events and then right below it will be a link you click that link and you'll have immediate download for you absolutely free i won't ask a penny from you, never will, never have. Today is a real special day to give you the type of news that actually proves what Jesus Christ said was going to happen just before he returns is actually happening right before our eyes. And most of the world is ignorant of these events, and they shouldn't be because these events were special events that were prophesied in the Bible by Christ showing us that when we saw these signs, we would really know that the time is drawing close to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Since Jesus gave us specific warnings of what to look for, and he warned us to keep on the watch for these things, by the way, if we see these things taking place exactly as written by our Lord in prophecy, that would most definitely confirm that the Lord is exactly who he says that he is, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And since all the prophecies are being fulfilled, and you see this next news that I'm going to be talking about being fulfilled, then you would have to come to a conclusion that your life here is only for a short period of time, but eternity is forever. And if these prophecies are fulfilled, that means that Jesus is who he says. He is the judge of the world the Messiah of the world, and he wants to grant you salvation so that through him, through his blood, so that you can enter into the kingdom of God for eternity. However, if these prophecies are coming to pass, which I'm going to show you with the proof text that they are, and you reject not only the prophecies, but you reject the message and the messenger, Jesus Christ, then your eternal life is in jeopardy because without the blood of Jesus Christ in your life, you would end up in a place that you do not want to go, everlasting fire. Jesus talked about this place more than anybody in the Bible. So your estate, whether it be in hell or in heaven, is at stake depending on if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I'm hoping today that the Holy Spirit will really entice you to focus in on what's taking place as I show you these developments because without a question, these recent developments in Bible prophecy are taking place when all of the other signs are taking place just as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 where he talks about this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. How close are we? Anyone that's been following my ministry would obviously know that I've warned look for a red heifer. A red heifer, a cow, a specific type of cow that was pure in color. That's why they call it a red heifer. There hasn't been a red heifer. And this is one of the reasons why we're stalled to see these sacrifices, the real sacrifices, take off. But anyone who's been following my ministry since 1977, from either my book, my two prophecy sites, or my YouTube videos, you've heard me say, get ready, because the red heifer is coming. Since we've seen all the birth pain signs that Jesus Christ talked about happen in one single generation, since the rebirth of the nation Israel, you should get ready to see a red heifer. They need that red heifer for the sacrifices. Essentially, that was the only thing left. Since they already made all of the instruments for the sacrifices, 
they needed this red heifer. Now, just so you know where it's coming from in the Bible, take a look at Numbers chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, and it states the following. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring you a red heifer. This is the cow that I'm talking about. Without blemish, this is a specific cow, in which there is no defect and on which a yoke has never come. In other words, this cow hasn't worked. You shall give it to Eleazar the priest, that he may take it outside the camp, and it shall be slaughtered before him. And Eleazar the priest shall take some of its blood with his finger and sprinkle some of its blood seven times directly in front of the tabernacle of meeting. Then the heifer shall be burned in his sight, its hide, its flesh, its blood, and its, and its offal shall be burned. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast them into the midst of the fire burning the heifer. So this is what they were commanded to do in the Jewish services at the time that Jesus was alive. And this is what they're getting ready to do right now. They know, the Jewish people that I'm talking about, they know they have to do this in the temple. They haven't been able to do it because they haven't had a red heifer. Well, I got news for you. Take a look at the news that just broke. Like everything else that's being fulfilled, I believe you're going to see the fulfillment of this. Take a look. We're going back to breaking Israel news. This is September the 5th, the 2018. This is today's news. Harbinger to Messiah, red heifer, is born. Again, this is the picture of this specific cow, this heifer. It cannot have any blemishes, just like it was described in that 19th chapter of the book of Numbers. Last Tuesday, the Temple Institute Red Heifer Program was blessed with results. An entirely red female calf was born, paying the way for, now get this, reestablishing the temple service and marking the final stage of redemption. Almost three years ago, the Temple Institute inaugurated its Raise a Red Heifer in Israel program. Due to laws restricting the importation of live cattle into Israel, the Temple Institute imported frozen embryos of Red Angus, implanting them in Israeli domestic cows. The pregnant cows were raised on cattle ranches in different locations throughout the country. The cows are giving birth this summer with several calves already having been born. One week after it's born, the newborn red heifer was certified, get this because this is important, was certified by a board of rabbis as fulfilling all the biblical requirements, the requirements that I just showed you in chapter 19 of the book of Numbers. The rabbi's emphasis that the heifer could at any time acquire a blemish, rendering it unsuitable. They will be inspecting the calf periodically to verify its condition. And then finally, this last paragraph, the red heifer was the main component in the biblically mandated process of ritual purification for impurity that results from proximity or contact with the dead body. Because the elements needed for this ceremony have been lacking since the destruction of the second temple, all Jews today are considered ritually impure, thereby preventing the return of the temple service. That's why... This red heifer is so important to the religious Jews in Israel. They need the red heifer. Now, knowing what Jesus Christ showed us about what was going to happen in the future, you can count on the red heifer being established. Is it this particular red heifer? We'll wait and see. But we do know this. One is coming. Now, that was the news back in September, September the 5th. Three months have passed since I gave you that information in that video that I made back in September. Take a look at this because I'm going to use this article to show you what's happened since. This is big time news. 
In the Mirror article, the headline, The Three Signs That Biblical Prophecies About End of the World and the Messiah Are Coming True. I'm only going to focus right now on the red heifer, because this is the one that is the most important when we're talking about the rebuilding of the temple and starting up the temple sacrifices, just as Jesus Christ warned in the Bible. There is a video of this red heifer. I'm going to just play the video for you right now. I'm going to stop it right here and read this so that you really can get the close view of what's taking place. On the 17th day of the month of Elu, 5778, August the 28th of 2018, a perfectly red heifer was born in the land of Israel. A red heifer candidate is being raised and specifically cared for under the auspices of the Temple Institute Raise a Red Heifer in Israel program. The red heifer brings the promise of reinstating biblical purity to the world and the rebuilding of the Holy Temple. There's that little critter right there. Now I'm going to go and read what the article has to say, because this is extremely important for everyone. And keep in mind, these rabbis have been inspecting continuously the red heifer to make sure there's not one hair that was a different color other than red. It had to be exactly as the Old Testament heifers were. This is incredible because no one has seen a complete pure red heifer for thousands of years since the biblical sacrifices were taking place during the time that Jesus Christ was alive. But take a look at this, friends. After extensive examination of the calf, Rabbinical experts are said to have confirmed, get that? Confirmed she is a viable candidate for biblical red heifer. Breaking Israel News reported a board of rabbis verifies she fulfilled the requirements of prophecy, which says the cow must be without blemish. So since September... As these rabbis have been watching this red heifer very, very closely, it is now confirmed that this is a pure red heifer. In other words, this cow, the way it is right now, this heifer, can be used for the sacrifices that the Jews have been looking for for almost 2,000 years since they were led into captivity and Israel was destroyed as a nation the first time. But just as the prophecy stated, Israel would come back in the last days, become a nation again, and after that happened, all of these other things, these prophecies, would take place. And when they did, anyone who saw these things, anyone who understood what the Bible had to say about these last days, would know that Jesus Christ is coming very, very soon. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, everyone. This is Pastor Frank DeMore. Today is November the 5th of 2018. And you're looking at one of two of my Bible prophecy sites. This is BibleProphecyMan.com. And both of my sites, both this and my EndTimesResearchMinistry.com site, has my book that you can download today for free. All you have to do is go to the front page of either of my sites, scroll down, you'll see the flaming title of the book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, the documentary on Bible prophecy and current events, and then right below it will be a link. You click that link and you'll have immediate download for you absolutely free. I won't ask a penny from you, never will, never have. Today is a real special day to give you the type of news that actually proves what Jesus Christ said was going to happen just before he returns. 
is actually happening right before our eyes. And most of the world is ignorant of these events, and they shouldn't be because these events were special events that were prophesied in the Bible by Christ showing us that when we saw these times, we would really know that the time is drawing close to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Since Jesus gave us specific warnings of what to look for, and he warned us to keep on the watch for these things, by the way, if we see these things taking place exactly as written by our Lord in prophecy, that would most definitely confirm that the Lord is exactly who he says that he is, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And since all the prophecies are being fulfilled, and you see this next news that I'm going to be talking about being fulfilled, then you would have to come to a conclusion that your life here is only for a short period of time, but eternity is forever. And if these prophecies are fulfilled, that means that Jesus is who he says. He is the judge of the world the Messiah of the world, and he wants to grant you salvation so through him, through his blood, so that you can enter into the kingdom of God for eternity. However, if these prophecies are coming to pass, which I'm going to show you with the proof text that they are, and you reject not only the prophecies, but you reject the message and the messenger, Jesus Christ, then your eternal life is in jeopardy. Because without the blood of Jesus Christ in your life, you would end up in a place that you do not want to go. Everlasting fire. Jesus talked about this place more than anybody in the Bible. So your estate, whether it be in hell or in heaven, is at stake depending on if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I'm hoping today that the Holy Spirit will really entice you to focus in on what's taking place as I show you these developments because without a question, these recent developments in Bible prophecy are taking place when all of the other signs are taking place just as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 where he talks about this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. How close are we? Anyone that's been following my ministry would obviously know that I've warned look for a red heifer. A red heifer, a cow, a specific type of cow that was pure in color. That's why they call it a red heifer. There hasn't been a red heifer. And this is one of the reasons why we're stalled to see these sacrifices, the real sacrifices, take off. But anyone who's been following my ministry since 1977, from either my book, my two prophecy sites, or my YouTube videos, you've heard me say, get ready, because the red heifer is coming. Since we've seen all the birth pain signs that Jesus Christ talked about happen in one single generation, since the rebirth of the nation Israel, you should get ready to see a red heifer. They need that red heifer for the sacrifices. Essentially, that was the only thing left. Since they already made all of the instruments for the sacrifices, they needed this red heifer. Now, just so you know where it's coming from in the Bible, take a look at Numbers chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, and it states the following. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring you a red heifer. This is the cow that I'm talking about. Without blemish, this is a specific cow, in which there is no defect and on which a yoke has never come. In other words, this cow hasn't worked. You shall give it to Eleazar the priest, that he may take it outside the camp, and it shall be slaughtered before him. And Eleazar the priest shall take some of its blood with his finger and sprinkle some of its blood seven times directly in front of the tabernacle of meeting. Then the heifer shall be burned in his sight, its hide, its flesh, 
its blood and its and its offal shall be burned. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast them into the midst of the fire burning the heifer. So this is what they were commanded to do in the Jewish services at the time that Jesus was alive. And this is what they're getting ready to do right now. They know, the Jewish people that I'm talking about, they know they have to do this in the temple. They haven't been able to do it because they haven't had a red heifer. Well, I got news for you. Take a look at the news that just broke. Like everything else that's being fulfilled, I believe you're going to see the fulfillment of this. Take a look. We're going back to breaking Israel news. This is September the 5th, the 2018. This is today's news. Harbinger to Messiah, Red Heifer, is born. Again, this is the picture of this specific cow, this heifer. It cannot have any blemishes, just like it was described in that 19th chapter of the book of Numbers. Last Tuesday, the Temple Institute Red Heifer Program was blessed with results. An entirely red female calf was born, paying the way for, now get this, reestablishing the temple service and marking the final stage of redemption. Almost three years ago, the Temple Institute inaugurated its Raise a Red Heifer in Israel program. Due to laws restricting the importation of live cattle into Israel, the Temple Institute imported frozen embryos of Red Angus, implanting them in Israeli domestic cows. The pregnant cows were raised on cattle ranches in different locations throughout the country. The cows are giving birth this summer with several calves already having been born. One week after it's born, the newborn red heifer was certified, get this because this is important, was certified by a board of rabbis as fulfilling all the biblical requirements, the requirements that I just showed you in chapter 19 of the book of Numbers. The rabbi's emphasis that the heifer could at any time acquire a blemish, rendering it unsuitable. They will be inspecting the calf periodically to verify its condition. And then finally, this last paragraph, the red heifer was the main component in the biblically mandated process of ritual purification for impurity that results from proximity or contact with the dead body. Because the elements needed for this ceremony have been lacking since the destruction of the second temple, all Jews today are considered ritually impure, thereby preventing the return of the temple service. That's why... This red heifer is so important to the religious Jews in Israel. They need the red heifer. Now, knowing what Jesus Christ showed us about what was going to happen in the future, you can count on the red heifer being established. Is it this particular red heifer? We'll wait and see. But we do know this. One is coming. Now, that was the news back in September, September the 5th. Three months have passed since I gave you that information in that video that I made back in September. Take a look at this because I'm going to use this article to show you what's happened since. This is big time news. In the Mirror article, the headline, The Three Signs That Biblical Prophecies About End of the World and the Messiah Are Coming True. I'm only going to focus right now on the red heifer because this is the one that is the most important when we're talking about the rebuilding of the temple and starting up the temple sacrifices just as Jesus Christ warned in the Bible. There is a video of this red heifer. I'm going to just play the video for you right now. I'm going to stop it right here and read this so that you really can get the close view of what's taking place. On the 17th day of the month of Elu, 5778, August the 28th of 2018, a perfectly red heifer was born in the land of Israel.
A red heifer candidate is being raised and specifically cared for under the auspices of the Temple Institute Raise a Red Heifer in Israel program. The red heifer brings the promise of reinstating biblical purity to the world and the rebuilding of the holy temple. There's that little critter right there. Now I'm going to go and read what the article has to say, because this is extremely important for everyone. And keep in mind, these rabbis have been inspecting continuously the red heifer to make sure there's not one hair that was a different color other than red. It had to be exactly as the Old Testament heifers were. This is incredible because no one has seen a complete pure red heifer for thousands of years since the biblical sacrifices were taking place during the time that Jesus Christ was alive. But take a look at this, friends. After extensive examination of the calf, Rabbinical experts are said to have confirmed, get that? Confirmed she is a viable candidate for biblical red heifer. Breaking Israel News reported a board of rabbis verifies she fulfilled the requirements of prophecy, which says the cow must be without blemish. So since September... As these rabbis have been watching this red heifer very, very closely, it is now confirmed that this is a pure red heifer. In other words, this cow, the way it is right now, this heifer, can be used for the sacrifices that the Jews have been looking for for almost 2,000 years since they were led into captivity and Israel was destroyed as a nation the first time. But just as the prophecy stated, Israel would come back in the last days, become a nation again, and after that happened, all of these other things, these prophecies, would take place. And when they did, anyone who saw these things, anyone who understood what the Bible had to say about these last days, would know that Jesus Christ is coming very, very soon. Before I get into the next article from the Jerusalem Post, I want to present a video about what you're going to hear about in that Jerusalem Post. So watch this video first and then I'll connect the dots. <laughs> We are marking the first uh, TBM uh, machine that is uh, going to excavate about uh, three and a half kilometers in this project. Shalom, we're here with the train on the way to Jerusalem. The train is not here yet, but we are at the beginning of the, uh, the excavation, the excavation of a long tunnel which will take the train from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv. We're talking about a half an hour uh, between the two cities. This is for sure a revolution. The uh, train was even more than an hour, more than the bus ride. Uh, because of all the uh, upwards, the hills to Jerusalem, uh, this has always been a big challenge for the train. This will enable the train to go upwards in a slope, which is uh, okay for trains. And here we are at the excavation of the first part of the tunnel between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. What is unique in this machine is that we can go uh, to a pace of uh, about 15 to 20 meters a day of excavation. We have uh, another two TBM uh, shield uh, machines that's supposed to start work about uh, August, September this year and excavate uh, two tunnels of uh, 11 and a half kilometers, will be, which will be the longest tunnel in Israel. And we hope to finish all this project uh, at the end of 2017. And the main goal is to revolutionize the train, uh, train trip from uh, Jerusalem to Tel Aviv, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Yeah, we are talking about a 30 minutes train, which is actually a revolution for Jerusalem and for Tel Aviv, and actually a, a rapid connection between the two uh, cities. One of the main uh, challenges is the fact that Jerusalem is, of course, on a hill. Yeah, and uh, this uh, project can help uh, Jerusalem a lot. That's what we believe. The, the slope uh, that is uh, allowed for trains is uh, only up to 3%. 
and we, we use this uh, slope at the maximum in this line. And this is the reason that we meet uh, Hauma station uh, 80 meters below ground. And this station is also in a building right now. Take a look at this Jerusalem Post. This article came out March 29th, 2016, with the headline, High-Speed Train from Jerusalem to Tel Aviv to be Completed by 2018. The highly anticipated high-speed train that will connect Jerusalem to Tel Aviv in under 30 minutes will be operational in 2018, the head of Israel Railways announced on Monday. During a tour with the Knesset members at construction site for the NIS 1.82 billion project, Boaz Tafir, CEO of the railway, said the train will take passengers from Jerusalem International Convention Center in Tel Aviv's Haganah station in 28 minutes flat. Now, one may ask, what is the connection between this high-speed train, Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount? This article becomes very significant when you're talking about transporting millions of people to an area that is currently being closed off to the Jews. And it becomes very significant when you find out that the Israeli government is spending massive amounts of money like this one point. $82 billion and plans that are being set to mass move millions of people right there at the Temple Mount. It's currently, as I said, closed off to the Jews. And what are they going to do when they get to the Temple Mount? They're going to pray and worship like they haven't been able to do freely. As of 2017, now one Jews might cannot ask, go up the to the Temple Mount without being harassed the or guided Mount. by Muslims who are currently in charge of this Temple train. Mount well, area. And many riots have broken out when the Jews did go up there because the Muslims are afraid that if they the allow the Jews to go to up, and that eventually the, Temple the Israeli government will stand behind the people and build this temple. And that's their worst nightmare. So now let me connect the dots for you between this high-speed train, Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount. And of course, in the moving of millions of Jews to that area. Take a look at this next article. Breaking Israel News. Infrastructure to bring millions of pilgrims to Temple Mount quietly being constructed for the first time. In approximately 2,000 years since the time of the Second Temple, plans are being formed by, guess who? The Israeli government to build an effective infrastructure for Jews to make their obligatory pilgrimage to the Temple in Jerusalem. Notice the article says quietly because if the Muslims were really to understand what is going on with the infrastructure and the purposes of it, I have no doubts that it would cause war between Israel and the Arabs. So the government of Israel, they're producing these mass trains, high-speed trains to move pilgrims and Jews to go up to an area which they cannot go up to right now. But they are making the plans in the background to do just that. And that's why this article says quietly being constructed. If the Israeli government just came out and told everybody what they're doing concerning moving Jews to the Temple Mount, Massive amounts of people and Jews to the area that is currently closed off to the Jews, it would cause instant war between Israel and the Arabs, the Muslims. It says the Third Temple will require a functional infrastructure that could facilitate the transportation of millions of Jews to Jerusalem during and after these festivals. Israel's Minister of Transportation. Israel Katz has publicly stated that facilitating this was his intention when planning the line of the fast train currently under construction between the airport in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. In a meeting with Temple Movement representatives in February, the minister explained, as a Kohen, Jew of the priestly caste, I have a special connection to the holy site. 
in front of my eyes, I constantly see the words, prepare the way, prepare the way. So you have Israel's Minister of Transportation, Mr. Katz, who is also a Kohen, Jew of the priestly caste, saying he wants to prepare the way, prepare the way. Where else have we heard this before? It looks like he took it right out of Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 40, verse 3. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway of our God. So the train is associated with moving Jews to the Temple Mount area for one purpose and one purpose only. The temple is a significant sign that will usher in, they believe, their Messiah. So there's a lot of significance in the articles that you're reading that are coming from people inside the government. So what is Katz planning? Look at the rest of this article. Katz is planning on extending the line of the fast train to transport people from Ben Gurion Airport to Tel Aviv in Jerusalem directly to the Western Wall. And what's at the Western Wall? It's the Temple Mount area right above it. The final stop will be the Kotel Har Haibayat stop, Western Wall Temple Mount stop. I said the road is being paved. I should have said the railroad is being paved for this building of the Temple Mount. Here's the bottom line. The Israeli government, people in that government, are preparing to move these massive numbers to a temple that's not even built yet. So you would have to conclude, if they're gonna spend millions upon millions of dollars on the infrastructure to transport large numbers of people, you would have to assume that the agenda is rebuilding of that third temple. And all that's taking place is they're fulfilling exactly what Daniel said and what Jesus Christ warned us about this third temple and the Antichrist coming when that temple stands. So I'm going to continue to finish off this article. It says, we expect millions of Jews coming to the Temple Mount even before the temple is built. So transportation is a potential bottleneck, Haman explained to Breaking Israel News. We need to open up more entrances to the Temple Mount since there is currently only one entrance available to the Jews. Now in this article you're going to find out that Israel isn't going to just rely on a fast train to move these Jews that are coming from all over the world to go and pray and worship on the Temple Mount at the temple that's going to be rebuilt. Take a look at the rest of this article. In a similar vein, Jerusalem Mayor Nair Barkat has recently announced plans to build a cable car system that will be capable of transporting thousands of people per hour to the area of the Western Wall and guess what? And Temple Mount. The Israeli government ministers just recently approved this plan during a cabinet meeting held inside the Western Wall Tunnel. So again, Israeli officials planning for the day when that third temple is built. So the article talks about the trains. It talks about the cable cars. What else? The stated purpose of all of these plans is to modernize the capital city making it easier for both residents and tourists to navigate its increasing traffic. But it is abundantly clear that all of these upgrades will soon be used for the purpose of allowing millions of Jews from around the globe to quickly and easily visit the temple and to fulfill their biblical obligation. We need to establish express service bus transportation to the Temple Mount from all parts of the country, Heyman said. The Temple Mount Express bus lines will have special blue and white bus stops enabling Jews to regularly travel directly to the Temple Mount, pray and return home. So I don't care what is going on the Temple Mount right now. As of November the 5th of 2018, in relation to the riots, the violence caused by the Muslims on that Temple Mount area, things in the very near future are going to totally change. The Israeli government is preparing for it, 
in the background quietly and Jesus told us it's coming. All they're doing is fulfilling his work. I don't think that it's a coincidence that all of a sudden around the same time as we're seeing this purified red heifer appear on the scene that this transportation system that the Israelis have been building for their people to go up to the Temple Mount and not just the Jews in Israel but all kinds of Jews who will be coming from all around the world to go up to the temple that will be rebuilt that Jesus talked about to do what well obviously to pray on the Temple Mount the area where currently they are having problems to worship on but as I said everything is going to change so I showed you what was happening as far as this system this high-speed train system and now let me give you an update because just as the red heifer has appeared this high-speed train has been completed as well take a look at this video נסיעה ראשונה של קו הרכבת החדש מירושלים, זה יום חג לירושלים. דווקא בתקופה הזאת שיש מי שמנסים לקרוא תיגר ולערער על זיקת העם היהודי ובעלות העם היהודי על ירושלים, אנחנו מחברים את ירושלים ומתחברים להיסטוריה של ירושלים. This red heifer, no doubt, is tied in to what happens for the last days, the sacrifices that we read about that are going to be reinstituted, just like the prophecy stated. So that means that the third temple that Jesus Christ warned us about, that was going to be standing in the last days, that has to be built, and the Jews have gotten everything they need already to build this third temple. You see a picture of it right here. Now take a look at Daniel 9.27 because Daniel shows us information about the sacrifices in the temple and Jesus confirmed what Daniel said. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. In other words, they have to start the sacrifices up again in order for the Antichrist to stop them in exactly three and a half years after he makes this covenant that you see here in Daniel 9.27. Because the covenant is for a period of seven years, exactly 1,260 days later, the Antichrist will go into this temple, stop the sacrifices that are going to be starting up soon. They've already been practicing them. The nation of Israel, the government, has given the Temple Mount Institute permission to practice the sacrifices which they have been doing now for the past four or five years but coming soon will be the real sacrifices especially now that the red heifer has appeared now as far as Matthew 24 this is Jesus in verse 15 look what he says when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel, the prophet, stand in the holy place. What is the holy place? It's the rebuilt temple. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. So we are to understand as we watch. This temple will be built. The sacrifices will start up again. And everything, my friends, is being prepared to finish off all these prophecies. And now that the red heifer is here, we're one giant step closer to seeing all of these prophecies completely fulfilled during the tribulation period, which means we're coming very, very close to the beginning of the tribulation period. Now, here is a point that I don't want anyone to miss. The Jews want this temple. They do not believe in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. They don't believe that their sins are going to be forgiven by going to this prophet, Jesus Christ. They don't believe that he is who he says he is, God in the flesh, 
fulfilling prophecy the first time and they don't also believe that he is coming back the second time. They're still waiting for their God but he came 2,000 years ago. Now for the people, the Christians who have taken Jesus Christ as their Messiah, we know that there's no need for a temple. But in order to fulfill prophecy as Jesus showed us and Daniel to fulfill those prophecies, there has to be a third temple built. Now take a look at this. This is from John chapter 4. I'm going to start reading in verse 20 because Jesus is confronting a woman at the well. And he talks about worshiping. And what I was telling you previous to what I just said, that there's no need for the temple. Not if you're in Jesus Christ. Look at this. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain or yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. What's in Jerusalem? At the time that he's talking, it was the second temple. That's where they were worshiping. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. That's what the woman at the well replied to Jesus. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers, get that, true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. So there's a distinction between false worshipers and true worshipers, which the Lord will clarify here in a second. Verse 24, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith to him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. And when he come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith to her, I that speak unto thee am he. So yes, a temple will be built to fulfill prophecies. But no, you don't have to wait to worship in that temple because our worship is through Jesus Christ the Messiah. The true worshipers worship Jesus Christ. Those that do not accept Jesus Christ therefore are the false worshipers because without the blood of Jesus Christ you're not really worshiping the Messiah. And this is very very hard for the Jews to digest but it's the truth. So the Lord is going to allow this third temple to be built. He is going to allow all prophecy to be fulfilled. And eventually, even the Jews during the tribulation will come to realize that the Messiah that they were looking for and hoping that they can worship inside that temple, he already came almost 2,000 years ago. We can see the handwriting on the wall. That's no question at all. And as an update to how many Jews have been making their way to this Temple Mount, let me give you that update from July the 23rd of 2018. This comes from Breaking Israel News. The headline to the article, Jewish Crowds on Temple Mount, turns somber Tisha B'Nav into joyous holiday. And they're talking about the second temple that was destroyed by Titus the Roman. In 70 AD and this is the temple that Jesus spoke to his disciples about that was going to be instituted in the last days as he pointed to what Daniel the prophet said in the Old Testament this is what the article had to say while Jews around the world fasted in mourning for the destruction of both Jewish temples an astounding 1440 Jews ascended to the Temple Mount on Sunday setting records that display a mountaining desire to rebuild the temple Last year, nearly 1,300 visited the site, approximately 400 visited in 2016, and 300 Jews ascended the Temple Mount in 2015. Until four years ago, Jews were prohibited from visiting the site on Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of the Hebrew month of Av, is a fast day commemorating the destruction of both Jewish temples. This year, it fell on Saturday, but since it is forbidden to fast on the Sabbath, the fast was held in Sunday, the tenth day of Av. This reflects a general trend of rising Jewish connection to their holiest site. Earlier this month, Jewish visits to the site during this Hebrew year of 5,778 past 22,566, surpassing last year's total.
Alishama Sandman, spokesman for Yeret, an organization that tracks the number of Jews ascending to the Temple Mount, reported that, that the number is currently approaching 25,000. Seeing so many Jews on the Temple Mount made me forget that the fast day was supposed to be sad, Sandman told Breaking Israel News. In the morning, there were more Jews on the Mount than at the Kutel. That was the first time I ever saw that. It is undeniable that there is an awakening among the Jews towards Gula, redemption, Sandman said. Well, hopefully now that you can see that all the prophecies are connected. The prophecy about the red heifer coming, now the red heifer is here. The prophecy about the Jews that would build again their temple that was destroyed. And in our generation, we have seen the Jews recreate every single one of the instruments that were once used in the temple sacrifices as in the time of Jesus Christ. That's already done. The plans for the temple already done. The government getting ready to funnel millions of people to the Temple Mount for worship as the third temple goes up. In the book of Zechariah, Zechariah told us Jerusalem would be a burdensome stone for everyone in the last days. And just this year, Jerusalem has been again in the news as many nations now are following suit with the United States in making Jerusalem the official capital of Israel. So whether you believe it or not, it's happening. Prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. And if you were smart, you would pay attention to what the Lord has revealed to you today and receive the Lord as your Savior. You won't have to wait for a temple to be rebuilt because the Holy Spirit will be residing in you and you'll be worshiping Jesus Christ in truth. Not one person that does not take Jesus Christ as the personal Savior and receives the blood that Jesus shed for us on that cross will make it into heaven. Jesus shows us this in Scripture. The only way that you can go to the Father is through the Son. And that can only happen by asking Jesus to be your personal Savior. And telling the Lord that you finally believe everything that He has stated, that He is the Messiah, that He went to the cross, He died for our sins, and on the third day He arose again just like he prophesied, and is in heaven now, waiting to come back to receive anyone who takes him as their personal Savior. If you haven't received Jesus yet, what are you waiting for? The Messiah loves you. He loves you so much that he even made it possible for you to stop by and watch this video today to learn this information that shows us we're very, very close to the second coming. Thank you for coming to my YouTube channel. Please, Subscribe to my channel. Continue to come as I connect the dots between Bible prophecy and current events. This is Pastor Frank DeMora. God bless.